Let's move on to the approach of the acute abdomen, starting with the history. Despite advances in laboratory studies and imaging, a detailed and focused history is essential to formulating an accurate differential diagnosis in the patient with an acute abdomen. The history should focus on the onset and nature of the pain. Any associated symptoms such as nausea or anorexia, whether they begin before or after the pain, and the progression of the pain. The history of inflammatory bowel disease, prior abdominal procedures, either open or laparoscopic, is important in constructing a differential diagnosis. Often, additional information may be obtained by observing how the patient describes the pain that is experienced. Pain identified with one finger is more localized and typical of parietal innervation or peritoneal inflammation as compared to indicating the area of discomfort with the palm of the hand, which is more typical of the visceral discomfort of bowel or solid organ disease. The intensity and severity of the pain are related to the underlying tissue damage. Sudden onset of excruciating pain suggests conditions such as intestinal perforation or arterial embolization with an ischemia, although other conditions such as biliary colic can present suddenly as well. Pain that develops and worsens over several hours is typical of conditions of progressive inflammation or infections such as cholecystitis, colitis, or bowel obstruction. The history of progressive worsening versus intermittent pain can help differentiate infectious process from the spasmodic colicky pain associated with bowel obstruction, biliary colic from cystic duct obstruction, or genitourinary obstruction. The location, character, and radiation of the pain are important to elicit. Tissue injury to inflammation can result in visceral and somatic pain. Solid organ visceral pain in the abdomen is generalized in the quadrant of the involved organ such as liver pain across the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. Small bowel pain is perceived as poorly localized paramedical pain whereas pain from a colonic region is centered between the umbilicus and pubic symphysis. As inflammation expands to involve the peritoneal surface, parietal nerve fibers from the spine allow for a focal and intense sensation. This combination of innervation is a responsible for the classic diffuse periumbilical pain of early appendicitis that later shifts to become an intense focal pain in the right lower abdomen at McBurney's point. Further, the pain may also extend well beyond the diseased site. For example, the liver shares some of its innervation with the diaphragm. Thus, the liver inflammation may create referred pain to the right shoulder from the C3 to C5 nerve roots. Also, genitourinary pain commonly has a radiating pattern. Symptoms are primarily in the flank region, originating from the splanking nerves of T11 to L1, but the pain often radiates to the scrotum or labia via the hypogastric plexus of S2 to S4. Determining what factors, if any, worsen or lessen the pain is important. Eating will often worsen the pain of bowel obstruction, biliary colic, pancreatitis, diverticulitis, or bile perforation, whereas food can lessen the pain from peptic ulcer disease or gastritis. Patients with peritonitis will avoid any activity that stretches or moves the abdomen. Those patients will describe worsening of the pain with any sudden body movements and realize that there is less pain if their knees are flexed. Anything that causes movement of the abdomen such as the car ride to the hospital can be agonizing. Associated symptoms and their timing are important diagnostic clues. Nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, pruritus, melina, hematochesia and hematuria are all helpful symptoms if present. Vomiting may occur because of severe abdominal pain of any cause or as a result of either mechanical bowel obstruction or ileus. Vomiting is more likely to precede the onset of significant abdominal pain is many non-surgical conditions, whereas in the pain of an acute abdomen with an underlying surgical cause, the pain will precede the vomiting. Constipation or obstipation can be the result of mechanical obstruction or decreased peristalsis. It may either be the primary problem, can be treated with laxatives or prokinetic agents, or it may be merely a symptom of an underlying more serious condition. Knowing whether or not the patient continues to pass flatus or have bowel movements is thus important. A complete obstruction with the absence of flatus or bowel movements is more likely to be associated with subsequent bowel ischemia perforation caused by the significant distension that can occur. Diarrhea is associated with several conditions that are not treated with operations. These include infectious enteritis, inflammatory bowel disease, or parasitic infections. Bloody diarrhea can be seen in these medical conditions as well as in colonic ischemia. So a careful past history can be exceedingly helpful in making the correct diagnosis of the patient with acute abdominal pain. Previous illness or diagnosis can greatly increase or decrease the likelihood of certain conditions that may not otherwise be thought of. For example, patients may report that the current pain is similar to the pain experienced during the passes of a renal stone several years previously. A prior history of appendectomy, pelvic inflammatory disease, or cholecystectomy can significantly limit the differential diagnosis. Any abdominal scars present on the abdomen during the physical exam need to be accounted for in the history that is obtained. Certain medications can both create and mask the symptoms of an acute abdominal condition. High-dose narcotics 
narcotics can interfere with the bowel motility and lead to obstipation and obstruction. Narcotics can also contribute to spasm of the sphincter of ODI and exacerbate the biliary or pancreatic pain. They can also suppress pain sensations and alter mental status. Both of these impair the ability of the surgeon to diagnose the condition accurately. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are associated with upper gastrointestinal inflammation and perforation. Steroids can block protective gastric mucus production by chief cells and reduce the inflammatory reaction to infections, including the significant peritonitis. The class of agents that are immunosuppressive increase the patient's risk of acquiring various bacterial or viral illnesses and also blunt inflammatory response, diminishing the pain that should be present and limiting the overall physiologic response. Anticoagulant drugs use is common in our elderly population and may be the cause of GI bleeding, retroperitoneal hemorrhage, or rectus sheath hematomas. They can also complicate the preoperative preparation of the patient and be the cause of substantial morbidity if their use goes unrecognized. Finally, recreational drugs can also be the cause of acute abdominal pain. Cocaine and methamphetamine can create an intense phase of spasm that can cause life-threatening cardiac or intestinal ischemia as well as severe hypertension. The differential diagnosis of the acute abdomen in women includes many more conditions than are found in the male population. In the past, the negative laparotomy or laparoscopy rate in women with acute abdominal pain was significant and substantially higher than seen in men. Improvements in and the widespread availability of advanced imaging such as MRI and CT scans have improved the diagnostic accuracy of the evaluation of acute abdominal pain in this population. A careful gynecologic history remains important in the evaluation of the abdominal pain in the young women. The likelihood of ectopic pregnancy, pelvic inflammatory disease, mitral smears, and severe endometriosis are all dependent upon the details elicited in the gynecologic history.